summer did arrive, but Home Assistant crew and other contributors are not taking a break. Today we will be looking at the July update of Home Assistant or version 2022.7. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As always, before we dive into what's new in 2022.7, there is a one warning. I did record this video on beta version or pre-release version of Home Assistant, to be exact at beta 3, which is at the time of the recording the latest beta and it did fix some of the issues that did pop up during the beta process or beta testing or beta release. While most of the functionality should be the same between the beta 3 and the full-blown release, there may be some bit of difference. If any differences do show up, I will pin the comment down in a comment section below. So let's dive into what's new in 2022.7. One of the biggest changes under the hood is moved to Python 3.10. Most of the Home Assistant users will not see this directly, because if you are running Home Assistant OS or Docker, the system itself will automatically upgrade to the latest version, and everything should work as it worked before. But that's not the only change under the hood. Bidraco has created a lot of updates or commits against the Home Assistant to try and improve both performance and stability of Home Assistant. First, and I think the biggest one, is YAML JSON tooling, which has been replaced and improved in this release. What does that mean for you? For example, if you have ton of automations or ton of anything inside your Home Assistant, Reloading configuration or reloading automations, input booleans, telegram integrations, etc. should be now much, much faster. Second thing is that devices can now try to auto-recover. Auto-recover can happen if, for example, during the boot-up sequence, device is not available or there is an issue with device or something like that. Now, when the device does recover, it will automatically be once again recognized and enabled inside Home Assistant which should, of course, improve on the quality of life, which are Home Assistant. For HomeKit accessory protocol, Home Assistant is now using newer and the faster encryption method. And this also prepares Home Assistant for the release of iOS 16. The next update also has a lot of breaking changes. If you are using Z-Wave inside Home Assistant, now you have update ability directly from within Home Assistant but you should be running specific version of Z-Wave, whatever you are using. We'll mention that a little bit later when we look at the breaking changes. For now, as far as I know, you are not able to stack the updates, but in future, maybe even in this release, but later down the road, you will be able to press update all, and then all the updates will be queued and run one after the other. For now, as I mentioned, you can press only button and update one single device. Nobody is perfect and maybe you want to use some other different unit of measurement for the weather related stuff. Now it's very easy to do it from within Home Assistant. This of course applies to other entities that represent the temperature. Unit conversion has been added also for those devices. Let's look at the example inside Home Assistant. If we look at the data from my solar powered ESP Home weather station, and the link to that video is up here, and we look at the temperature, it is shown as 28.8 degrees centigrade. If we click on it, click on entity settings, we now have also ability to change to Fahrenheit and Kelvin. If we look at the pressure, cogwheel, we can change the unit of measurement for this entity also. But as the release now say, you can go and change this for other entities too. For example, here we have humidity, pressure and temperature. We can select this and instead of hydropascals, for example, use MMHG. Gauge cards have lately received a lot of love. One of that was the ability to customize the color. Next one was to add this needle. Now we have ability to change and remove numeric state and have text description for the same state. For example, if we look at this gauge card and edit it, we can enable needle, we can define severity, let's say that 26 
already is too hot. And this was what we could do before. What we could do is replace severity with segments, add from temperature, color, and then label for that specific segment. And yeah, it's now much easier to read the outside temperature. Template editors, autocomplete, and MDI icons. Now you are able to search through the list of material design icons from the template editor. Let me show you how you can now search for the MDI icons, also inside template editor. Type MDI and start typing tree. But if you notice, it will search for tree anywhere inside the name. So it will be tree, tree outline, auto renew, which has T, R, E, and one also E, plus file tree, pile tree, and all the other ones that have T, R, E, E in itself. And if, for example, we would search for on, it would show everything containing on. One thing to note is that you will also see the preview. If we type MDI for material design icon, on the left side here, you can see preview of each and every icon. You can now filter the history using the target selector. For example, we can select an area and see everything from that area. We can select a device and receive all the historical values for this bathroom motion device. Or of course, choose the entity. And yes, you can add multiple devices or multiple entities or multiple areas. And as you can see, it really loads very fast. If you like coding, there is one extra thing in this release of Home Assistant, and that is easily convert values to booleans in templates. Sponsor of today's video is SwitchBot, and SwitchBot currently has pre Prime Day sale. First phase of the pre sale will end on 6th of July with the sale of Plug Mini HomeKit enabled for the US market. And yes, this device can be automatically added to Home Assistant because Home Assistant 2 is HomeKit compatible. If you are my channel member and you are seeing this video on 5th of July, you will be able to get in US only this lock for 40% off. But this is not all. For any purchases of any device from the SwitchBot from 7th to 13th of July, you are automatically entering the giveaway. And this giveaway will be for iPhone 14. 50 lucky winners will win this phone as soon as it gets released. So yes, you have a chance to win iPhone 14 even before it is released. For more information about that, check the SwitchBot website and the link to SwitchBot website is in the video description. And also while you are in the description, check out and copy discount code. This is my personal discount code that can get you extra 5%. From other noteworthy changes, we have now ability to control loudness and various additional surround related settings for your sound speakers. Yolink integration has been extended and now supports much more devices. Jellyfin supports movie collections in a movie browser. The Akara FP1 sensor has now been added to ZHA. And one nice thing that we talked a lot a couple of releases ago, something has been added to the area card. It can now show moisture, flood alerts, humidity, and show icon for temperature. Let's jump into the new area card. Previous cards only had temperature without the temperature icon. And as you can see, now we have temperature and humidity. Of course, there is a motion sensor here available. If you have motion sensors, you have ability to toggle the lights and switches on and off. Plus, if I'm not mistaken, the covers can be also controlled from the area card. But take a look at my kitchen sensor. Yes, we now also have icon inside Home Assistant showing us that there is a water leak. So as promised, and as you can see, area cards are still receiving a lot of love, and I really do hope that we will be able to customize some of the things that we cannot customize still at this point, and that is to, for example, select different devices that will be representing the temperature or humidity for a specific area. In the Hunter Douglas Power View, we now have support for top, down, bottom up, plus some other backend stuff, such as additional temperature sensors for vCare, 
Pi Sensible has been updated to newer version, and power sensors have been added to this. Also, one nice thing that has been requested is the pause the logbook stream when scrolled. In the previous release, we have received the ability to auto-update the logbook. But if you are scrolling, then maybe you want this to stop. About page in Home Assistant has also been updated. You have now icons to change the log, thanks to you can buy merchandise, you can request feature or you can make a feature request, you can do a bug report, help and license. Most of this has already been previously available in Home Assistant, but now it has nicer icons. Although this release doesn't include new integrations, at least for now, there are some new integrations available from the UI. This is 8sleep, radio thermostat, scrape, simple push and sky bell. But now let's go through the breaking changes. Once again, before you update your system, please go through each and every breaking change, especially those that are related to something that you have inside your home assistant. I will not be going through the full list. I will just go through the couple of the biggest. Python 3.10 now ships with the Home Assistant Operating System, Home Assistant Container and Home Assistant Supervised. You do not have to do anything, this will happen automatically or it will automatically update. But this can be a breaking change if your custom component still is not compatible with 3.10. Second and maybe the biggest breaking change is Bluetooth. Home Assistant upgraded to version of Python 3.10. And unfortunately, the Blue Pi hasn't been maintained or updated since the December 2018. There are two options. Either Home Assistant stops developing itself and waits for the update of that component, or breaking changed and the library, BluePy library, is replaced with something else. And this has happened with this release of Home Assistant. While developers have put a lot of time and effort, integrations such as Biwi, Elgato, Avea, EQ3, Bluetooth Smart Thermostats, Leviton Decora, Mi Flora, and Zenge are currently, at the time of the recording of this video, not working and not supporting due to the issues and also due to the contributors not updating their components. If you have will and have knowledge, you can try and help bring back life to those integrations. Google Scan for Calendars service has been removed. And now you can use Home Assistant Reload Config Entry for the Google service and it would do the same thing. The Google Calendar Add Event service is deprecated and will be replaced with a new service called Create Event. Weather, and this applies to all weather services, has some changes to the entities. Previously, the units for weather had not been corresponding correctly with the documentation. Now the units are aligned for pressure and wind speed. So, for example, if unit system is metric, default pressure is HPA or hydropascal, and the default wind speed is kilometers per hour. But if you are using imperial system, then the default values correspond to the default values for the imperial system. And something that we mentioned at the beginning of the video, and something that we will be ending this video with, is the Z-Wave JavaScript. Check out the list in the end of the breaking changes to see what version you have to be on to ensure that it will still be working in the Home Assistant with the latest release, 2022.7. And there are two integrations that we can say bye-bye to. This is ILRXR and Somify. And what do you think about the 2022.7 release? I really like changes under the hood, but I also like the changes or improvements to the area card and the gouge card inside the Lovelace UI. What are some of your favorite additions to this version of Home Assistant? And what do you think hasn't been improved for a while? And you really think the dev should look into that? If you have any kind of a comment or a question, don't forget to go to my Discord server and leave a message there, or you can leave a message down in a comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and of course the streams. And yes, we should have a stream next Saturday, so in a couple of days. And on that stream, we will be selecting or picking up one lucky winner of the SwitchBot Pan and Tilt camera. If you want to know more about the giveaway, check out my previous video on SwitchBot, Pan and Tilt and SwitchBot in their camera integration inside Home Assistant.
If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a like. And before I end up this video, I really want to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.